Guten Morgen! I'm going to attempt to crochet something using a German pattern, which I'm going to choose from this book. And today is the day I'm going to decide what I make. So, um, this is Tersk Sube Hakenfried. I don't know, but it says Umpasta Wunderland. So, if that's a cognate, uh, these are going to be like pastel, cute, kawaii things, maybe? Also, there seems to be some sort of video with this. It's like knit video on Litogen. And on the back, there's something like Verde de Community QR Code. So I'm guessing somewhere in this book, there's a QR code that could potentially bring me to the German crocheting community. Which would be helpful if I understood German, but... Will come in in pastel wonderland. Okay. Anyway, we are going to look at this book. Ooh. It starts with an introduction by the author. And it has materials. Das Garn. It is safe to assume that the first material any craft any like yarn maker is going to mention is the yarn um oh i found the difficulty rating <laughs> it's right here um so i pay attention to the dots to know which one is more difficult or not and because i like a challenge um i'm probably going to choose one at the hardest difficulty uh because you know translating the pattern is not enough of a difficulty even though i am probably going to be somewhat lost because i never studied german <laughs> um i don't know <laughs> the Ein Maschenmacher is in klein clamor aus metal or plastic. It's either like the stitch marker or the crochet hook. Because I understand metal and I understand plastic. Wait. Okay, so there's like a Franz Ferdinand song, um, Darts of Pleasure, where at the very end of it they have this German phrase is like super fantastic. Is the Eiser Nashlik? You can Heiser super fantastic. I don't really understand what it means, but that probably rhymes with plastic, huh? Fantastic, plastic. They also have this song regarding strawberries that's in German. It's not on any of their albums. It's just like this random one off thing they released very early on in their career. It's also very early on because Alex Campranos is not the lead singer. They have Nick McCarthy doing the singing part, which is like, what? Like Alex Campranos sings lead on pretty much every other Franz Ferdinand song. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to talk about that either, but there you go. <laughs> I'll have to remind myself to link that song below so you can experience the madness for yourself. <laughs> because they, they put it on YouTube. I mean, that's how I found it. <laughs> there's Amy Gurumi Gallery. It's like, oh, they're talking about the QR code again. If you want to look at it again. Oh, I found QR codes. Found QR codes. Um, I'm wondering if this is also. Oh, you know what? This is maybe like if you don't understand, this is how we explain it to you. If the pictures aren't clear enough, but these are also very clear pictures. Luftmasches. That's a chain. Kettemash, Habestocken, Stabchen, 
stop chin looks like a double crochet. Yeah, stop chin looks like double crochet. Hop, especially since before it's hobbish stopping. I'm guessing hobbish is half double crochet. This is also explaining the abbreviations, which is good. Um. So when I made the rule that I couldn't like use technology, well, I said I couldn't use Google Translate to translate for me. I have to use the book. But if the book is providing a QR code, I'm allowed to use that <laughs> because that is a resource. The book is like, here, go. And if I understand it, then yeah. Video tutorials. The QR code leads to a video tutorial if I need it. Which I might for the Kachmachis. Masche? Is that it? Sum. Sunamen. That's an increase, it looks like. Yeah. And that looks like a decrease of some sort. Triple decrease. Okay. Baden ring. That's the magic circle. Baden ring. <laughs> Jelangen. Jelangen. Okay. I'm not sure how committed I would actually be to learning German, but seeing these words and attempting to pronounce them is a lot of fun. Like, a lot, a lot of fun. Pickle. Oh, that's very similar to what we would call like the pick, pick up stitch in English. It's just they have a K where we would put a C. Nopin? Oh, that'd be like our popcorn stitch. Okay. We have hit the pattern. And it says the first pattern is Beverly de no, die better dame. And if it wasn't for one detail, I would say this is a teddy bear. But if you look underneath her teeth, like if you look underneath her nose, there's like two white things resembling teeth, which makes me think this is a beaver. But do beavers have ears, though? Anyway, adorable. Oh, my gosh. I mean, with the bow, too. Like, oh. Oh. She has a tail. The tail is a beaver. So they have multiple pictures here. This is already better than many books I've seen. Because if you have, like, they have a hope for the tail, even though it looks like this is a dress. That part's a bit weird. Okay. There's a bunch of flavor text here, but I don't really understand it. There's something about socks. If it's a true cognate. There's this word. Susamin pasende. How many letters are in that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 letters in that word. Oh my gosh. If you have a word that long in English, there's usually a hyphen. Most words don't tend to be longer than seven letters, most of it. Like my last name is about as long as it gets, or like my first name, first name, two syllables, just Rebecca, no, sorry, Becky's two syllables. My, tr my government first name, Rebecca, is like three syllables and that's seven letters and that's kind of long to write out um, in English.
That's about as long as you want to go in English, pretty much. But in, like, German, yeah, we just have this 16-letter word, and, like, yeah. Beverly's kind of cute. Also, the way her, like, her feet curve in like that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's also deciding on this, how they decide to sew it. I honestly don't think Beverly is going to be the one I end up making. But it's a good, it's a strong start. Very strong start. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. My heart is about to like burst from wanting to squeal. This is, oh my gosh, how many letters are in that word? Okay, this is Billy Dosh. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 letters in that word. Anyway, this is what I'm looking at. This is like some sort of bee or butterfly. This is a bug. Like, oh my gosh. That's like something you make for like a child's nursery when you understand your child is like forever at the capacity of a drunken adult, but they're sweet and cute and like toddlerish. They don't really understand what's going around them and you want the, a nice calming presence and that that's what you give them. You give them Billy. Because Billy's just really adorable and you want to like lean into the adorableness. I mean, there are wings. Like you just want to hug Billy. Yeah, Billy's adorable. <laughs> um... Okay, this doesn't hit me the same way, but this is also adorable. <laughs> uh, this is Bonnie Dosh Teddy Mansion. Mansion. What's adorable about this stuffed animal is that this stuffed animal has a stuffed animal. Like it's a teddy bear that's enamored with bunnies. And therefore is carrying a bunny. <laughs> Which I honestly get. <laughs> I actually. I actually went to like a. Character drawing class or something like that. Like. I want to say it was pre-pandemic. Like, I had to come up with a character, and I came up with a stuffed animal, and I was like, well, if I wanted to outline this character, what type of character would have this stuffed animal? And I ended up coming up with a kid, and, like, I drew a bunny. And then I ended up coming up with a kid in a bunny outfit as the fit. I don't know if I still have any of my work from that. I probably don't. But it was like this raggedy old bunny. Yeah, it's like Bonnie and Bonnie too. Bonnie wants to be a bunny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just when you think it couldn't get any cuter or more adorable. You don't see, the pictures here don't really show Bonnie's back, though. Do they give Bonnie, like, a bunny tail? No, they just have a generic picture here. I could see myself making that in the future. I'm not sure if that's going to be the one I end up making this video, but already kudos on the back. You get, like, two for one here. <laughs> like, the stuffed animal wants a stuffed animal. Like, yeah, 
obviously, like, I know it's an inanimate object, but I feel like I found a soulmate. <laughs> Coco das Crocodil. This is a crocodile with a tutu. <laughs> That's like nice and quirky. Oh, I once gave someone a crocodile as like a housewarming gift, but like the crocodile sat up like this and had the thing and I remember like one of the first things the person did was try to like bend it so it was like how a crocodile was naturally and then realized like no this is how it's sewn anyway this is how a crocodile is naturally um that is kind of cute I mean that this is that's this entire book MO, though, isn't it? Just to be cute and adorable. Oh, but apparently the crocodile is all the way difficult. Apparently. I guess probably because it has so many parts to it. Oh, it has all the spikes individually and, like, putting it on the spikes. Okay. These are the clearest charts I've ever seen in any language. I don't know if you can see that. Can you? I hope you can. I'm holding it like far enough back to hopefully not get like the glare. But there is writing pointing. This is the round you attach it to. You attach it to this round here and you attach it to this round here. And oh my gosh, most people do not bother with that. To be fair, most of the time I disregard it and just put it on however I feel like it looks right and most it, it works well enough for me. But like the fact that they're that clear and precise about it, kudos to whoever wrote this. Who's the writer? Arena Lee. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, okay. This is adorable. This is a dragon. It's Darcy Das Dragon Machin. I would, it's like kind of like a horse with wings. <laughs> but this is Darcy. Also, the color helps too. I, I love the color choice they chose here. So adorable. Um, the wings look very similar to what I just did with a pterodactyl I made recently. Also, it looks like a horse, but like a flying horse, but it's not a unicorn. It's a dragon because it, well, it's not one horn, but two horns, but it also has the spikes down here. And it's like, this is the dragon you cuddle. Mm. Mm. So cute. Also, the fact they named it Darcy, like Darcy. It doesn't sound particularly German, but it's still so cute. Okay. Okay, I realize that see he is probably toe. Yeah, it looks like toe. But I see like here, I just see like multiple see he, see he over the pattern. It's just like it reminds me like like I'm going to regret that later on. But <laughs> that particular image right there. Yeah, yeah. Now we have multiple of them. A couple different patterns. There's a lot going on with this dragon here. Yeah. That that is so many pins. So many pins holding. Oh. I'm usually not that careful in trying to attach it. Oh my gosh. Doki der Elephant. 
Well, this is an elephant. It is one of the most adorable elephants I have ever seen. Like they, they put a hat on the elephant. And it works. Most of the time the elephant doesn't really have any headgear or they'll put like a bow on it. But that's also like, um, that's also like, uh, I don't know. That's just a cute hat. Like it's, it looks sloppy, but it looks like it fits and like, like, oh my gosh. Okay. It's just like a, like sometimes, how do I describe this? Um, sometimes you look at a picture and like, sometimes you look at pictures like, I don't know anything like that. And then sometimes you look at a picture and it's like, Oh my gosh, I know exactly who this would personify. And oh my gosh, I look at this elephant and I have someone in mind. It's like, oh my gosh, this looks like this person I interact with all the time. And like, personally, like, and the fact that it's like, a, it's an elephant because I don't typically think of this person as an elephant. When I think of animals, I think of this other person being, I think more giraffe or snake. <laughs> but, um, it's, yeah, just the, the way the eyes are, it's like, oh my gosh, it looks like this coworker. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know if anyone else ever experiences that where you just see like an image of an animal and then you automatically like think like, oh, it reminds me of this person. Okay, as I'm saying, like this animal makes me think of somebody else. Um, I'm looking at this animal here and it doesn't look like anyone I ever, I know. This is very unusual. This is SB di Esedeme. It's a horse. But he, he, here's the kicker. I don't know if this is supposed to look like a normal horse or a rocking horse. This is what I'm looking at. Um, those rosettes are cute. I mean, they... It's largely, I guess, because it's pastel and like pastel isn't exactly because the book did say this is a pastel wonderland. But it's the way the head is situated, like with a normal horse, the head would be like more forward. But with like a rocking horse, you can have the head back because you kind of want the do 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 motion while the kid goes back and forth and like. You want the head to be more balanced on top of the body when it's a rocking horse. While with a regular horse, you can have the head jut out because the horse actually has to do things with its head. And like the way the hair is on this too, like usually with a the horse, they just have like the long hair, like there's lots of patterns. It's like, Oh, just have the hair go down and this one's like no we're gonna have the hair a lot closer we're gonna make sure the focus is on the little rosettes for sb uh there's mention in the flavor text of beverly our little beaver friend from earlier so it looks like the flavor text very much like the Spanish book, the flavor text, like my Spanish crochet book, this flavor text seemed is more involved. And it's probably the fact that 
the author is probably giving more like um what's it called uh giving more of a background story to these and like connecting the animals to each other which is fun to do if you're going to make flavor text for all your animals but i can't really tell because i don't understand german <laughs> um There's a little pom-pom on the tail. Not crazy about pom-poms. But if it is, it is. Oh, wow. That is intense construction. I mean, if I want a challenge, SP will give it to me. This is the picture I'm like going like, oh my gosh, that's intense construction. Posts are not that involved at all and i absolutely respect this writer for going into that much detail to explain how to make this animal and to put that in there oh my gosh wow this is like the first time i've seen like a pattern go like wow this might be over like Honestly, I don't really think there's like a crochet or knitting technique that's really over my head if I put my mind to it. But the fact I'm seeing this in German, as opposed to English, like even in English, that level would give me pause. Um, whoa, Espy. Okay. Um, That wouldn't be going to a little kid. That would be going to someone who I want to impress very, very much. Oh my gosh, this guy is cute. Also, it's a proper bird. It has wings. <laughs> this is Harry Der Wiedehoff. If I had to guess what type of bird this is, I would guess woodpecker. This is what I'm seeing. Also, I'm not even sure this correlates to an actual bird. I would say this is more fantastical. But cute. Adorable. Adorable. Oh. Um. Yeah, like that seems like it would be like a nice challenge with like the little spikes on top with the uh, mohawk thing <laughs> uh, the head feathers just look yeah look at me mm -hmm. uh but also like the way that the beak is curved and like the shape like the general shape of harry here is pleasing and the i'm not even sure I was about to say, I'm not even sure you would need the scarf, but I see some images of Harry without the scarf. And while he does look good without the scarf, I can see how the scarf adds an extra level of, like, heart meltiness. Arena, are you trying to break my heart from how much I want to squeal right now? <laughs> because these are really adorable. It's like, I remember reading this, like, science thing where I don't know how true it is or not where it's like cuteness often taps into like how aggressive a person is too because like you see a cute thing and you want to protect it and then it, you get like super protective of it and it's like oh my gosh I love it so much <laughs> yeah Anyway, that, that's what a lot of these patterns are for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. That is like the cutest dress I've ever seen. Oh my gosh. So that, um... That conversation I had, like, that little tangent I had about the bumblebee, it's like, you get this to a little kid, 
you just want them to experience all the adorableness in the world and like to help them guide through it also applies to this pattern too this is hattie dye mouse this is a cute little mouse like oh my gosh i'm usually not intrigued at making mice but uh, i i would i would make hattie oh my gosh just that dress and like the the pigtail bows over her ears like it adds like just the right amount of like girliness like this is the perfect example of being girly without relying on pink i mean she has the pink nose because like mice have pink noses but and this is like a perfectly girly outfit without just relying on pink to make it girly. Like, um, there's feminine and then there's girly. And, um, like this falls, falls fully into girly young girl-ish. Probably because of the ruffles and the bows and whatnot. Maybell Daiku. I think this is a cow. If it's a cow, it's the least awkward cow I've ever seen. Usually when I see like knitting and crochet patterns with cows, they end up being very, very awkward. But this is Maybell. little overall dress with this pattern book I can't tell what the dress is if like the dresses definitely like stick out and I can't tell with the pattern if it's because the stuffed animal is bigger or if because the dress is just intentionally bigger I would assume it's because the dress fits the stuffed animal but the stuffed animal itself is bigger they don't exactly put naked pictures of these in. Oh, it's because the stuffed animal's bigger. Okay. That means it's more to hug. Um, all right. Mackenzie Dosh Sleep Virgin. So I do have something to omit with this book. Um, I looked at several of the patterns to make sure I was getting what I was supposed to be getting. And this was the pattern that made me decide to get this book. So this is a seahorse. Right, I don't really see things like this. People don't tend to design things for seahorses, but like, adorable. So, possibly because they also chose the blue yarn and the way the blue yarn like goes together just like I, I love the color combinations and also just like the way it looks it's very unusual you don't typically see seahorses um again there's a cotton yarn okay like so cute I think this is an iguana but it's so cute oh my gosh like look at this it's Millie Dyke Kragen Nisky? I have a soft spot for reptiles. <laughs> Probably because, like, frogs are my favorite animal, and 
even though frogs are amphibians, if you want to see them at the zoo, um, you have to go into the reptile house. And I mean, you don't just go and see only the frogs in the reptile house. You see all the different animals. So I also look at the snakes and the lizards and I, I don't know. There's something about a reptile that just melts my heart. <laughs> uh, and even though if I were to make Millie, I wouldn't be making her brown. Um, but Millie's just cute. Millie is really, really cute. <laughs> oh, and Millie is apparently friends with Darcy, the dragon. No. Wait, is Darcy the dragon? Oh, these names are in alphabetical order. Yeah, Darcy is the dragon. That's right. Yay. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. Um, also, friends with Benedict. Did we already, did we already meet Benedict? Did I forget who Benedict was. Is there a table of contents here? Oh, wait, was Bandic the bee? No, Billy was the bee. Start with Beverly. I think we have yet to meet Benedict. Hmm. Yeah, these names are in alphabetical order. I assume that German follows a similar uh, alphabet order that English does, but I don't know for a fact what the actual order of the letters are. German. But they seem to be following the English letters in that way. It's going by their first name that the author's giving them. The Millie looks like a lot of fun to make. Tolly the Gandishrik. Tolly's a duck. Or a goose. I guess it depends on the color. But see, proper bird. It has wings. And feet. Also, this author really loves giving bows to all the animals. Just all the bows. All the frills. Um... The color book would be int intriguing there, but also like the little beret, cute. Oh my gosh. Um, as a material, this is even with like if this were translated into English, I would say that this would probably be one of the most thorough books I have ever seen when it comes to explaining crochet. Ooh, it's Talia's friends with Ed, with Espy. Okay, they likes to play golf. All right. Ah. So throughout the book, there have been like periodic um, pictures of like the different animals all together. And this one animal keeps popping up and they haven't mentioned it yet. Well, now they have. It's Wally the Dur Wombat. Basically a wombat that wears a little uh, rainbow sweater. 
which I guess it makes sense. It's a wombat. I kept thinking it was a pig, but it's gray, not pink. Um, kind of cute. It's not making me squeal as much as the rest. And also, yeah, it looks pretty easy. Um, but such a sweet sweater. Like, even so, it's just like, it's nice that there's like different difficulty levels too, as well, because like not everyone coming to the book has the same level of um, competency. It's like, a, I know that sounds mean, but it's like some people will pick up this book and it's like the, they haven't learned how to crochet at all before. And then other people will pick up this book and it's like, I have crocheted everything in the world, throw what you got at me. I need a challenge. Um, and I feel like this book could probably solve both. This wombat would probably be more towards the uh, easier route, like the person who's just learning how to crochet would probably pick up the wombat. While, oh, it looks like the wombat is on spiral rows from how this person does it. Yeah, but, um. Other people, like me, well, other people will uh, want a more difficult thing. And that's where you get Espy, Espy, the rocking horse. Wow. We've met Benedict. Dear Spritzmouse. My gosh, Benedict looks like a little Sherlock Holmes. I wonder if this author is a fan of the show Sherlock, where Benedict Cumberbatch plays Sherlock and he is therefore the inspiration for this mouse. But there's a cape and a monocle and like that, that hat. Like, this is a stuffed animal you make, not for the stuffed animal, but because you'd like the outfit. It's too cute for words. Oh, my gosh. Too cute. Oh. Like, obviously, there are parts of it that are not yarn. Like, there's actual ribbon and bows. Like, there, there's, a, there's a monocle. Like, obviously, you can't give this to, like, a three-year-old. This is a stuffed animal you make for an adult just to sit, at, like, on their bench and bring them a little happiness and joy. They even mention Sherlock in the flavor text. Like, oh my gosh. Even if I don't end up making this project for this video, I will be making this at some point. Oh my gosh. Look at that. <gasps> um, as my squealing goes beyond the pitch of human ears, uh, it's like plaid. Plaid, uh, how do you keep that straight? That'd be hard to keep straight in English. At least there's like a chart to make it easier. Oh. And Benedict seems to be where the person ends the book. So now I gotta decide what to make. <laughs> so I know I say I look a challenge and I was thinking about going like super, super hard, but Maybe I shouldn't go as hard as I can right off the bat, considering this is a German book and I don't understand German. As well, like, 
I don't necessarily want to do the easiest project available because I tend to get bored with those. I want something with a little bit more mm, because like the difficulty usually adds the mm. There's like a sheep on the binding of this book and like there are no sheep patterns. I'm pretty sure there are no sheep patterns. Why? Okay. <laughs> As I just deal with Okay, so I have all of these here in one thing. There are a couple patterns I'm tempted to do, but I want to hold off on because I have an idea for like a different type of video. With those two particular animals because the fact that they showed up in this book only proves my point regarding those two animals. But huh. I can already go. So that takes out three of them. If I Also, if I don't want to go quite as hard as I need to go hard, that means I probably shouldn't do et Etsy, Etsy just yet. I should get more of the hang of what I should do. It's weird. I'm looking at that pattern now. I thought it'd be a challenge, but it seems like it might be too easy. because there are very few limbs. Well, that one is very similar to ones I've done in the past. That one's a little bit more different. That one could provide enough of a challenge, I think. <laughs> but I'm also thinking like, that one happens to have the same name as another project I'm working on at the moment. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with my general inst- I think I'm going to go with the project that made me buy the book even though I'm afraid it might be too easy, but it'll be a nice way to dip in. So, especially considering that I'm working with a language I don't really understand. So I think I'm gonna start with Mackenzie. Even though there's not really too many limbs, there's just like the little flipper here and like I could, I am afraid of maybe getting bored with this, but interesting shape unusual shape and it will start getting me used to this author so that way when i do some of the more complicated patterns in the future i can go like oh yeah this is how this author works and like here it's like midway difficulty so i have um It's not going to be super, super easy, but it's also not going to be so difficult, like, oh my gosh, am I struggling, you know? So yeah, the next time I'm crocheting, I'm going to be crocheting in German, we're going to be starting Mackenzie. And that is today's entertainment. Have a nice day. Auf Wiedersehen.